renewable energy sources uh, can change the way we run the world, uh, can change the way we experience the world. There are different reasons that people cite for why do we need another, light, another energy source from the coal, from the oil that we use right now. One of them that you can cite is the well-being of the world. Uh, per capita energy use in a country is related to the well-being of an individual in a country, which means if I can provide a cheap source of energy for people to use, a cheap, renewable, and not harmful to the planet source of energy that people can use, I can uplift the world. I can provide to the billions of people that right now do not have any access to energy a way to uplift them from their poverty of energy. Second reason that I like to cite is clearly many people talk about global change and is the contribution of the uh, pollution that Earth provide, that humans provide to, the, to planet Earth uh, causing a drastic uh, change in, in, in the weather patterns, maybe. <clears throat> but the one that I like to cite a lot is to cause, talk about the uh, quality of air that we breathe. The, um, a very poignant example that I have found in literature is in 2003. In August 2003, there was a big blackout on the east coast of the United States. And for about a day and a half, there was no, no electricity in New York and north of New York up to Boston. Well, the consequence, uh, the reason for there being no electricity is that 256 coal-burning power plants in Midwest got turned off. The, the, about a day into the blackout, a professor at the University of Maryland decided to fly an airplane over New York and collect air samples. Went back to the lab and analyzed the air samples. He found drastic reduction in ozone levels, in particulate levels, in sulfur dioxide levels in the air. By drastic, I mean up to 90% in most of these materials. These are materials that cause smog, that cause um, a variety of pulmonary diseases, that cause our air not to be as clean as it can be. In just 24 hours, of turning off those power plants was sufficient to clear out the air. Well, just imagine if we can actually live our whole life without ever having to turn on the coal power plants. Solar could provide that. I had the privilege of participating in the Energy Research Council, uh, which started the uh, MIT Energy Initiative. In the very first few months of the Energy Council meetings, one of the very first presentations we had was a presentation from a student group, the Energy Club that at that time numbered, I think, 250 students. Energy Club today is over 700 students, my understanding is. And if you look at what they asked us to do, they provided us about 15 to 20 page well-written report demanding from us as faculty to come up with a way to educate students at MIT about energy. They gave us a very clear charter and demonstrated a very strong need for us to take action. We have, this past February, conducted a survey with undergraduates asking freshmen and sophomore, about 2,000 students, to respond to our survey. And the survey simply said, if you had an opportunity to minor in energy, would you do it? We got 500 responses. Three quarters of those responses said, certainly, or enthusiastically so. So we do have a mandate from our students. We need to go ahead and develop ways for them to learn energy. We can think about doing that as providing them a major in energy. But a major in energy is so encompassing. It could encompass every single department at MIT. The other option is to develop a minor in energy, a program that would supplement any degree that MIT offers right now. We have done that. We generated a structure that provides a student the following, education in science, education in so social science, and education in integrative technologies. These three span the science of energy, the social science of energy, as well as the engineering of energy technologies. Now, science of energy is clear. We want people to understand the first law and to be able to implement it better as time goes on. Social science of energy is the area that our students are not usually well equipped. We want our students to be able to understand the implications of their scientific and technological breakthroughs, how to work with the local governance, how to make decisions, how to work with lawmakers and people who decide if your wind tower can be built here or there, how to propel technologies that you see as the most viable ones to the forefront of the decision-making tree. Lastly, the third element, the integrative technologies, clearly is the way to allow our students to have good, good judgments on what to build. For example, if I give you a building, what do you want to do? How do you want to power it? 
Do you want to use a passive solar heating, geothermal, solar? Do you just want to do it using hot steam generated by oil burning power plant? What is it that you want to do in order to run this particular building? So these are the questions, that the three areas that we would like our students to have a large experience in and to form the core of our minor. Beyond that, we have integrative experiences in the very first year where students can take freshman seminars, uh, GIR, uh, that, uh, GIR examples that happen to have a lot of energy examples, freshman seminars that have, uh, again, educations on energy. Or, in the last end, have capstone experiences in their senior year where they can maybe go to a company and try out their ideas, or even more, stay on campus and do a walk to talk lab where propose an idea on the way that MIT can become more energy efficient and go ahead and implement it because we'll support you, we'll provide you the educational credit and funding as needed because we would like to see you be able to propel this campus to beyond where it is. Much more importantly though, the ulterior motive I have is when that student goes and builds the particular structure on campus, he'll be passing by it every single day and his friend Joe will walk by with him and he'll tell to Joe, hey Joe, you know, I built that. And his friend Joe will say, well, I can build that too. And his friend Joe will also take that particular class. The best thing we can do here is MIT is not necessarily save the world by making MIT more efficient. I think the best thing we can do is to figure out the way to teach the next generation of leaders. Our students, many of them, will become CTOs, CEOs of companies. If we can instill in them the knowledge that they need to run a more efficient world, more energy savvy world, well, we've done our share. Our, our efforts will multiply.